Last week I went thrifting as I typically do each week and I scored huge. I thrifted this three piece dresser set for only $20 and I got really lucky with these pieces. If you stick around till later in the video, I'm going to share how I was able to buy these pieces without them even being on the store's floor yet. But first let's talk a little bit about them. This set is a one dresser and two matching nightstand set. It does have some missing hardware and some little kid went to town putting those stickers on. Some of the finish is failing and there are multiple drawers that kind of just spill out. But these pieces are solid wood and it's actually made from Stanley Furniture which is a higher quality brand of furniture. So I'm really excited to make these pieces over. Before anything else, I want to address these drawers that are spilling out. Not all of them are doing it, but I would say at least three or four of these drawers are. In order to keep the quality of these pieces, we want to make sure they aren't sliding down like they are here. Now, in most cases, it does have something to do with the drawer slides. Here, you can actually see that it is broken. So we are going to go ahead and replace it. If you've never done this before, it may seem a little intimidating, but it's actually super easy. You just want to unscrew the two screws that are in the back and take the whole piece off. Then you'll want to go ahead and pick up some new ones. You you can find these on Amazon and I will have a link to them in my description box below. I got them for a little over $8 and it comes with a pack of two. Now it is kind of a two-part process so we're gonna pull the two pieces away from each other and use just that bottom piece for now. It's just like the one that we removed but this time we're screwing the screws in which means you should be able to use the same exact holes. Once that piece is on all nice and tight, we can move on to the second component. Here we are actually dealing with the drawer slide itself. All you have to do is unscrew that screw, then you plop that new screw into the piece and it should click right into place. Then you screw it in tight and at that point you should have a fully functional drawer slide that slides nice and smooth and keeps your drawers up, which is the most important part. And I don't know about you, maybe it is just me, but oh my gosh, I love when things are easy. This was so easy to do, and I'm so glad that these drawers are working good now. Moving on, it is now time to take off the hardware and deal with the mess that stickers are. I do not love stickers on furniture, and even more, I do not love trying to take them off of furniture but they just cannot stay so of course i tried to pick them off but a much easier solution was to use a sharper putty knife and i got the paper part off but it definitely still left the stickiness part now i will tackle all of the stickiness once i pull out my sander as i go i'm also taking out all the drawers because i find it is much easier to work on the body and the drawers separately. As I'm taking all of the hardware off, I was just thinking to myself that this is going to be a lot of hardware to replace and replacing hardware can get pretty expensive. However, because I have been flipping furniture for a couple years now, I definitely know where to find the better deals. For example, don't even step foot in a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a Menards or any other hardware store like that. Not for hardware at least. I mean, you can for other things. Just don't go for hardware because nine times out of 10, you can always find better deals on Amazon. Plus they come in packs of hardware, which means you're paying way less for each individual piece. Unless I'm in a crunch for time, I get all of my hardware off Amazon. And I absolutely do have my favorites. Maybe I'll link my top three in the description box, that way you can check it out. I've noticed that not only these three types of hardware are super affordable, but also when I use them, those pieces sell very quickly. One of my favorite things about flipping furniture and taking something that someone else has once owned is all of the little treasures that you will find. And this time I found some summer camp catalogs and some yummy chocolate. Don't worry, I didn't eat it. It went straight into the trash, obviously. Now, so random, I also had a little command strip to peel off and it didn't even have the hook, but that's fine. Most of the time they come off pretty easy. Finally, we can get into cleaning. I like to use these Scott rags. They are just, you use them once and then you throw them away. And I really like that because then I'm not washing anything and it's just one and done, garbage go. 
and I like to use those with warm water and Dawn dish soap. There are so many solutions out there that you can use to clean down your furniture. A lot of furniture paint brands have cleaners that you can use as well. I just like the dish soap because it's really easy to use. It cuts down on the grease and most people already have it in their homes. Plus if you don't have it, it's only a couple dollars at any store practically. So I just stick to that. While you're cleaning, don't forget to clean the drawers as well, especially under where the hardware used to be because a lot of the time it collects dust there and you definitely don't want that um, as you move forward in these steps. Also, if you are deciding to use Dawn dish soap, make sure you are going back and just rinsing all of the surfaces down with just warm water. A lot of the time the soap can leave some residue and it will show up in primer, paint, stain, whatever it is that you are doing. Now it's time to grab your respirator because here comes the fun part. <laughs> Just kidding, it's not very fun, but I always like to torture myself for some reason. We are going to be sanding these tops down to bare wood and you definitely do not want to breathe in any of that dust. So I'm protecting myself, wearing a respirator and we're just gonna do it. For this process, I'm using my DeWalt palm sander and it's actually attached to my shop vac. So most of the dust is going into my shop vac right away. Um, but like I said, it's still important to protect yourself. Now in order to do this the most efficiently, I am using a 60 grit, which is a pretty rough grit. So this is really just ripping through the surface. Even with a 60 grit, it still does take a while. I think it took about an hour and a half to get the two nightstands and the um, tall boy dresser down to raw wood. But hey, look how pretty that is raw. I think that looks so good. Now, when you are doing this, you want to make sure that once you've reached the look you're going for, which for me is raw wood, um, then you go up in grit. So for me, I went to like 120 and then like, I don't know, it was 200 something just to really smooth out the surface more. I may have used a 400 grit as well. I can't remember, but the point is, is your surface is going to be so scratched up, so rough, not smooth at all. So going up in grits is really going to smooth the surface out once you have that raw wood back. And I already know someone's going to come for me for tilting my sander like I do, but I'm telling you right now, I have seen no bad thing come from it. And no matter what you say, I am not going to change my mind about this. It makes it go so much faster. And just like that, we got some beautiful looking raw wood tops. I'm not going to keep it bare like this, but you can just see the grain. I don't know why companies always cover up the grain. It's so pretty. However, even though the tops look exactly as I wanted them to, we are not done sanding yet because we still have to go through and give the entire body and the drawers a scuff sand so that it is ready for paint. I am going to be staining the tops, but I am still going to be painting the body of the dresser. For scuff sands, I like to stick between 120 to 220 grit, just because it's not too rough, but it's also going to roughen it up just enough so that any primer and paint will adhere to the surface for a long, long time. After I finished the scuff sand, I made sure to go back and just wipe all of the surfaces down. I usually like to do this with a wet rag just so that it really helps pick up all of the dust. But after that, then we move into primer. I like to use the Zinsser 123 primer. This is my favorite adhesion primer. If there were any stains that needed to be blocked, I would use a different primer. But for simply just adhesion, I think this primer, you get the best bang for your buck. Make sure that you are shaking it up. And we're also going to go ahead and tint this primer. You are getting a little bit of a sneak peek here because I'm going to show you the paint that we're using today and it's this navy blue color from Bear and I'm using it in the scuff defense. This is one of my newer oops paints that I bought for only nine dollars for the whole gallon and I have not tried this one out yet so I'm excited to see how it goes but because I haven't used this paint before that is why I'm going to prime it. As you know when in doubt prime it out and I am in doubt with this paint. 
Well, okay, I'm not doubting it. I just don't know how good it is yet. But because it is a darker color, tinting the primer just a little bit will save me from having to do more coats because it's going to darken up this super white, bright primer. You can also get your primer tinted at the store, but I think it's easier and more efficient to just tint it with the paint that you're going to be using rather than that gray um, tint that they just use at the store. Now that my primer is ready, I'm going to go ahead and tape off my tops. I don't want to get any paint on them. Now, it's also not the end of the world if I do because I can just go back and sand the paint off. But I feel like it's better to just do it in the beginning now to prevent it from happening. It saves you some time and it just makes it so much easier. While I'm priming, let's talk about how I got these pieces before they were even on the store's floor, meaning they weren't out for the public to look at yet, so I got first dibs. It's not some complex thing, it's actually a lot more simple than I'm sure all of you are thinking right now, but it's also something that I feel like most people don't do, which is why I typically get lucky more times than not. Really, all there is to it is going up to one of the store managers, whether it's Goodwill, Salvation Army, or some other thrift store, and simply asking them if there are any more pieces of furniture in the back that you can look at. A lot of the time, new pieces come in and they haven't had a chance to price it out yet. There's a specific guy that will, um, guy or gal that will price everything out. Or sometimes there's not enough room in the store floor at the moment, so they're keeping it in the back until there is. Another thing that I like to do a lot is call ahead. This can actually save me a trip because if they say they don't have any pieces of furniture, then I simply just don't have to go out. However, if they do say that there is some furniture, I will almost go immediately. At one of my local thrift stores, the manager actually knows my face because I'm in and out so often that she gave me her personal number and she'll actually text me a picture of everything new that comes in before it even hits the floor. I can't say that every manager is going to do that for you if you ask them because I'm not sure they're supposed to and that's why I'm not going to give out the store name, but that's how I got these. As I share this, I do think that you guys may think that that's not fair, but you also have to remember that this is one store and there are hundreds of thrift stores in every state, so don't get your panties in a bundle over just this one connection that I have, please. It really doesn't hurt to try. I don't know if they have anything in their rule book saying they're not supposed to do something like that, but this specific manager has had no problem sending me pictures and new leads as they come in. After a couple hours, the primer was dry and I was able to move on to painting. I'm just using the same navy blue paint, making sure it's shook up and then it's ready to go. Just like the primer, I'm doing a mix between painting with a brush and rolling. I roll every time I can, but there's always going to be some spots that I have to hand paint just because the roller can't reach it. Honestly, the color that the mixed primer and paint made, it was really pretty. It was like a beautiful light blue, but I don't know. It was like a light blue with a little bit of gray. I mean, you see it. And I actually thought it was kind of pretty. I almost debated on just putting another coat of that primer paint mixture and having that be the color. But I need to do my research because I don't know if like I can actually do that. I would assume I could, but I've never heard of anyone using like just the tinted primer and having that be their, you know, their finish. I've never heard of that before, but it was a very pretty color. Obviously I didn't go ahead with that. I am going ahead with the navy blue and this ended up turning out really good too, but if you know in the comments, tell me if I could have done that with just the tinted primer. If I could have just left the tinted primer, would that have been okay? I don't know. Anyways, knowing what I know now after finishing the set's makeover, I don't think I needed to prime. Obviously, it's always okay when you do, but it's not always necessary. As the paint states, it's already a scuff defense paint, but it's also pretty shiny. And any time that there is a thicker sheen to paint, it usually means that it is more durable. Those flatter paints usually are pretty thin and need some sort of primer and also top coat. I definitely did not need a top coat for this set with this paint because of how durable it is 
on its own. I will say I was a little bit nervous after this first coat went on because it looks more like a aqua blue than a navy blue. It was definitely just because of the primer, the lighter primer underneath, but it looked weird and I thought, oh my gosh, this is not drying like a navy blue. And, but th after the second coat, the navy really shined through. It did only take two coats to reach full coverage. However, there were a couple spots that needed just a third coat. It was just kind of like a touch up coat. Um, but after it had full coverage, it was looking good. That navy blue was showing through. And although I usually stick to neutrals, I was loving this navy blue. And it was then time to focus on the tops again. I never know when I'm peeling off tape if any of the paint is going to kind of leak through. I got lucky this time and the tops were really clean, but after all the tape was ripped off, we could start focusing more on the tops and the stain that I'm going to be using. So for the stain, I'm using this gel stain from Minwax in the color Aged Oak. I wanted these tops to be dark and creamy and I think that would just really match well with the navy blue. So I made sure to just stir it up a little bit. I put some gloves on because I hate the feeling of um, sticky hands from stain after a project like this. So but what I'm doing is I'm just wiping it on with the same paper towels that I used um, to clean the pieces down. And then I'll go back with a new one and wipe all the excess back just like I'm doing here. After it dried, I was a little bit disappointed in it because I was really hoping for something pretty dark. And I would say that this was a light to medium stain. So... I took a day or two to regroup and I really did my research on a darker stain color and what I ended up with was this Varathane gel stain in the color Dark Walnut. I had one for wiping it on and then I had a different one for wiping the excess off. Right away I could tell that it was so much darker and this was definitely more of what I was actually going for. Personally, I really enjoy using gel stains. I feel like they are more beginner friendly as you can move it around a lot more than other stains. I do a lot of painting projects, but I would definitely say that I am still a beginner when it comes to anything with stain. I'm also still trying to find some of my favorite stain colors, so if you have any favorites and it's a darker stain, definitely comment it down below because although I like the stain that I ended up with, I think my favorite is still out there. Now as far as hardware goes, I did find these cute little gold knobs and I'm really excited about these because I feel like anytime I'm painting navy blue, gold just really pops. So I put all of those hardware pieces on and then the next morning I came to put the top coat on the stain. I'm just using this Varathane polyurethane and I like to put it on with grout sponges of all things. I just cut it into a small little section and then I go along against the wood grain and I find that this is the easiest way to put on any sort of poly without showing any streaks because I know poly can be kind of hard to work with sometimes, but if you find methods like these, it makes it a lot easier. I put this top coat on all three tops and then I let it dry for multiple hours. I did go ahead and put a second coat of this top coat on just because I really wanted to make sure these tops would be protected. Usually I use a flat or a matte, but this time I did go with a satin finish since the paint was already shiny. Going on, I know this looks kind of scary and you can see kind of a whitish hue with it, but I promise it dries and you won't even be able to see it at all. Just make sure you're going back and checking your work and making sure there aren't any clumps or if you're using these grout sponges, make sure there aren't any bubbles because that does tend to happen. But after the two coats of top coat, these pieces were all finished because the hardware was already on. I'm going to list these back on a Facebook marketplace and try to sell them for $400. What do you guys think? Do you think that's a good price? I definitely think someone is going to love them in their home at that price, but let me know what it would sell for in your account. But anyways guys, now let's go ahead and get into the final reveal. All the day. 
It's no use 